Okay, so I, at these lower stakes, I go for a 2.5 instead of a 3x. Uh, I think I want to put pot control as much as I can while I'm getting reads on people. Yeah, so I just want to like pot control as much as I can and keep pots as small as possible because I think we're going to get the biggest edge by making hands and getting the chips in. Um, I still want to be aggressive because I want to get the overfolds pre-flop. Uh, it turns out that obviously frenzy fed red here ends up being a reg and I don't think I would get overfalls pre-flop from, from Frenzy Fed, but regardless, he was unknown at this time. And uh, so I still think having an aggressive, uh, especially with like the GTO aggressive hands, stuff like King 7, Queen 7, like all the big connect disconnecting high cards, they just do better because we're blocking their calling range with King X and stuff like that. So they have just more folds naturally. So I still use those hands as my aggressive hands. And they're more like hands that, make straights and flushes i don't mind limping them because they just can make a lot of equity and we can go post flop and make good hands so for example like queen 10 suited here i'd probably limp and king queen suited is just such a high ev hand that we want to put money in the pot and keeping c bet small as as per gto anyone on a pair board not going to want to go any bigger than this got the range advantage um we don't block any black doors, so us hitting this queen is just a massive. It's a, it's a massive part for our range. The the only thing is he's not got many folds here on the turn, and I don't want to bloat the pot too big in case we are against a nine, because I'd end up here calling too much on rivers, given that given that um that we don't block any of his backdoor draws and stuff like that. So if I was to bet here and he called and then the river came. A brick and i decided to check cool I, I think the pot would just be too big and we get a bit of it's like i guess we let the pot get too big that way whereas this we allow some of his backdoor equity hands to bet and some of his floats just to bet uh, he he ended up having queen 10 of spades which is fine on the flop to call but i, I would try to have a heart in my hand uh, or at least one diamond and maybe two hearts just I think it's okay though because queen height is strong enough. I think all of all the board ways are going to be fine for him to call. Um, don't think he made a problem, uh, mistake there. Um, but just still want to take a note that he's going to be not missing floats, right? That, that, that's that, that's um, and also that he block bet the turn. And this is a big note here because he block bet the turn in order to check back the river. And that's the note I end up taking here is. It's so he can get the free check on the river. So here with um, top and bottom, it's going to be always be a bet from us. We don't block the main check back. It's going to be Jack X. So we're not blocking that. And his hero calls are going to be like Ace Jack and uh, sometimes Queen Jack because he blocks straight and doesn't block some of my bluffs. It might be some low diamonds or whatever. So we still want to go all in because his, jack, his hero calls aren't interfered and he's still going to call with like ace jack type hands so we just definitely want to just be going all in here even though the straight completes and a lot of our bluffs get there i'm still going to have some bluffs and it's going to be a good card and he does end up having ace jack i don't actually remember him having ace jack because all this going on i didn't actually see what hand he had uh, so it's good to see that he had the bluff catches you'd expect them to have uh king five here i i toyed with going all in I don't know him. Uh, I think going all in is pretty good. Uh, but then I thought maybe a 2x pot is going to be really ballsy to go all in over the top of it. And he might treat it the same as an all in uh, and sometimes just fold some chops. He doesn't fold a chop, but we also get to see that he, he raised jack five off suit on the bottom. Um, so it's noteworthy. I don't know if I do take a note on it, but at least we get to see that what kind of range he is playing. And uh, definitely should be taking a note here. Again, a bit disorientated because trying to get tables, get rid of tables. Um, but definitely want to be taking those kind of notes because now we can free bet jam a lot pre-flop uh, against his open. Uh, and, and yeah, just like even like as, as wide as like ace, ace X off suit. You, like if someone, if someone shows me jack five off in their opening range, I would jam uh, like ace two off suit. I, I, I would just jam it pre-flop. I'd play like someone that's playing heads up. Uh, so here... Here's another very interesting spot here. So <clears throat> here we wouldn't want to go anything shy of getting all the chips here when he checks the turn. Um, so yeah, we set up uh, we set up an SPR of one. So always thinking about SPR um, because when someone sees the river uh, two, two, two to one uh, that they're getting on the river, they're going to just 
talk themselves into calling that especially when like all the hearts don't fill in and especially like a great card like this comes in he's never going to fold a seven so there's no reason to ever not put all the chips in and i expect people to be calling with some free x here as well just because when when like these hearts just don't come in uh, people get sticky so yeah don't want to go for anything less than all of it <clears throat> King High, we've got enough showdown. No need to take a tick turn into a bluff here. Uh, and always trying to see what people are doing. And so as you see, he doesn't doesn't bluff too free. Two is a lot more easy for us to make comments on. So uh, I'll open it is this. Um so I didn't see bet, <clears throat> I didn't say bet into two of them. Uh, flatting range and small blind it can be so wide but also can be super narrow uh when i don't know i just try to get to showdown as soon as possible try to see a showdown uh just pop control all the way obviously when we've got a gut shot and a pair on the turn we're great um <clears throat> going for the double check here more for deception against a great player that would check raise me a lot when i don't have much six seven in my range a uh, good player will definitely try to exploit that with uh, quite a few bluffs and possibly turn some of his pairs into bluffs and our nine being the best hand a lot of the time. But I think we're going to get put in a lot of awkward situations. Uh, am I willing to get in on the turn with nine ten? No, I'm not. So uh, I think pot control is nice. <clears throat> Maybe going with like some ones that don't interfere with some of his bluffs because I think the, the ten is going to interfere with some of his bluffs there. If we had a, like an ace ten, I think trying to set up stacks there, like I did with the eights, is better. Uh, with the queen ten here, <clears throat> we want to build a pot. We want to build a pot, but we also don't want to. We don't want to take away from the fact that we're going to be limp stabbing just one BB a lot to exploit him. So I try to keep it small just to keep that dynamic where I'm just limp C betting. Uh, the one BB and he is close, but again, I don't know if he's a recreational or not. But I just want to get as much value as possible with with a queen here, and uh, yeah, don't expect him to really ever have me beat. So, uh, and I don't think he's going to call too big given the run out. Um, so far, nothing too interesting. It's just kind of standard stuff, but. It does get quite interesting. This ace king is super close to if I want to see bet or check. Um, the reason I don't mind it as a see bet is one, our hands as good as it's pretty much going to be. Like, it, I mean, we can turn to make it, and we could, we could, we might be like getting pushed off our hand. But we also have the best hand a lot, and we have a decent hand to like two streets if it doesn't come uh, like at eight, nine, or ten on the turn or a diamond, and so. I would like kind of if he just called, I'd probably actually use this combo as a bluff the ace king. I know how that kind of sounds crazy, but I'm just not blocking any of the things that he would bluff, but he would fold. And I think when I check back, I'm just going to lose pretty much a high frequency, especially now that we're recognizing this by guy's a, a reg. He's been in our games in the 50s pretty much every one. Uh, it's 100 up here. So for that reason I, I decided to take ace king as a bluff as a, against a recreational i would just check back because i don't expect them to to take the turn probe on that board as much as a reg would because i think it's a great ex a board to, to just to, to fire away on and i want to be quite protected when i check back against a reg on that board and so ace king kind of goes into my sum equity hand also blocking some of his like hero calling hands like even like his king second pair and stuff like that or ace ace bottom pair those are going to be his like hero calling hands and i block those so if he just calls to flop and it does come some absolute rubbish two three offsuit spade or something then ace king can be a great candidate for a triple barrel nine ten sewage gonna raise if he was to jam gonna call even if he's a recreational don't know anything about him i'm still not i'm, I'm not gonna fold such a high equity hand um even against them I, I don't i'm not one to make like big exploits like a nine ten suit there to me would be a big exploit if i was to raise fold it and if i was to ever think about folding it i'll just limp fold it if that was the case if i wanted to make that exploit against someone but I want to still play because I think the hand just does best there 
when we're that shallow at 12 big blinds. If we were a bit deeper, I'd just limp, call ISO, and then fold the jams. Here is this is the first interesting spot. And <clears throat> now, pre flop here, if this was a reg, I would be folding here. Uh, and you might be thinking that's crazy, 5 8 suited, but he's raising off 11 big blinds. This guy's got 8.5 big blinds. So, like, effectively, he's kind of playing like a 10 big blind range. And this is already marginal. Uh, but uh, as a recreational, I think they're just going to, like, because he should be open jamming like Ace-X, uh, all Ace-X, he should be open jamming like Queen-Jack. And this range should be super polarized, actually super strong, because his worst hands he's going to be raising, if it was a reg, is going to be something like King-8, King King-9, King offsuit. So they're, they're the kind of bluffs. And I just don't think that's the case. I, don't, I think a, a recreational, especially in a $100 game, is just going to be, like, raising some hands that he should be going all in with. And if you was to put it in pre-flop uh, ranges against someone that's like raising like their range instead of going all in with the hands that they should go all in like ace five ace six ace seven offsuit etc and even the suited ones uh if we was to put those in the range then we could even call as wide as like queen two offsuit even some like jack five offsuits and stuff like that if if we think their range is that wide at this spr but because it's so polar, um, these hands actually end up becoming very, very close to a fold. So against a reg who would be jamming his ace and probably o o o over jamming and his min raise is super strong, then we won't realize our equity and having suited and connecting hands isn't even like a, like I, I would never fold uh, six, eight suited uh, because we make more straight draws with it, but five, eight suited, I would uh, bin it. Then we get a flop that doesn't really hit his range that much. Uh, given that I'm expecting a recreational to be too wide, and potentially, like if I was to bet, he might just jam in hand like uh, some of the stronger ace x, maybe king queen, or like at least not going to fold. Um, so I decide to go for an, a bit of an unorthodox uh, donk. I don't go for the bigger size. I decide to go a bit smaller just to really induce him. Um, he goes all in. He ends up having ace five, but this kind of like proves my point that pre flop like we want to be calling here and then um if it was like a reg that wouldn't have that wide of a range you would want to be folding uh we get to make back the ev straight away so that's pretty nice okay so here with king nine uh <clears throat> we've got a strong hand we're in position we don't want to let our opponent just think he can get away with limping and we've got a good hand that blocks some of his limp jams, like Ace King, obviously being one of the main ones. Um, so, and even some of his limp calls, Nine Ten suited, Queen Nine off suit, like hands like that, we're blocking those hands. So we're just going to win the pot a lot there, and yeah, I think just taking any time we can win win a pot and build a pot that we have a, a very strong hand with. And King Nine is a strong hand once someone's limped. Here's close. Um, we could we can do either. <laughs> In hindsight, I think checking uh, is good. Um, but again, he is a recreational, and yeah, just building building a pot against recreational is never going to be a bad thing with, with, with the like, high top end of our range, especially now when we turn pretty much nuts other than the straight. Um, a wee bit half pot now, obviously not folding. He he does have a straight. That's fine. Coolest happen. But I think I think uh, check and flop is fine. Also, um, yeah, something definitely like queen six I would start, and then queen seven is just like right there on the edge. Now we've got Lynn the puppy who is a good reg. I haven't noted everyone yet because again this computer is quite new and haven't noted everyone who, who they are uh, yet. But I have got notes on him, so I've obviously played him on this computer. But Lynn the puppy is going to be one of the better regs. So we get two to a hundred dollar games i don't know who european is i've never played him before uh, i'd assumed he's a reg given that he was on two tables so i um, kind of count these as reg games again with the king seven is close uh i actually check it back majority of the time but at the beginning of games i like to establish a aggressive against limps one because i don't expect people to limp jam as much at the beginning uh, with like speculative hands, I would like, expect them to kind of fill you out a bit at the beginning of, of, of a game. And here with the King Seven, I think it does hit his limp call range a lot. He's still got like Jack Nine in his range. He's <clears throat> got some Queen Ten in his range, and it's not a bad 
there's not that many like two super scale cards for us, given that we got top pair, it's not gonna have ace x too much. And yeah, obviously worst card being like a jack or an ace. Uh sorry, an ace being the worst card, sorry, and a nine. Then when he checks the turn, now we want to kind of get as much chips as we can in. We do expect him to have some pair of straight draws here. Uh, don't expect him to don't expect him to like just jam them. Expect him to call them. Check nine is interesting. Um, so when we bet flop, obviously we do interfere with some of his flop calls with the nine of diamonds. Um, so does weight him towards heaven some high diamond, <clears throat> queen of diamonds, king of diamonds, jack of diamonds, uh, king of diamonds, uh, and then we size up turn. Don't expect them to fold those diamonds. Uh, do expect them to fold some like definitely two x and some six x with a diamond wouldn't. Uh, okay, so over here with the eight nine. We've limped and bet. Yeah, so we limped and, and sized up the flop that we turned our cut shot straight. And then so I think just going half pop, our opponent's got more of this in his range. He's going to have more two pair combos in his range. He's going to have like the, the free four, which we just don't have in our range. He's going to have some eight. He's definitely going to have eight, nine in his range, but we have eight, nine, obviously. But we, as our general range is going to be played, he's going to have the seven, five. He's going to have the six, five, six, seven. And uh, he's going to have, even some king seven so um yeah i think this is a mistake here over here it, i I, did, I ran it in in the solver after and we can actually look at that quickly in a second we can run it we can look at it in a second um i end up calling because i don't block the higher diamond and i think there's a good run out for him to bluff uh, especially when i check and so if he's got like a queen of diamonds jack of diamonds i do expect him to take his bluff he, he had a, obviously a very good combo um to play the way he did because he had the six of diamonds so it kind of like it shows like that he's a good player and the way he played it and when the six when the six pairs i go for a check given that i feel i feel that six is a big part of his range but Having said that, I think we should just still bet half pot because we can induce more bluffs when we bet half pot. Something like something like uh seven eight or or five eight <clears throat> type hands would probably bluff over a over a bet, but they'll just check back. So I think I think a bit of a mistake. I do, I just thought the six was such a big part of his range that I mean we're getting that anyway, but I, I would hate for him just to call like my half pot. But I think even against half pot is going to jam. And I think this probably would be a candidate that he would bluff with if we had bet half pot. So I think we we definitely missed one there. Uh, here, great combo for checking back and great combo for hero calling on numerous runouts. Obviously, this is a... Uh, this is not a size I'd expect him to be bluffing. So when he bets that size, I do expect him to have some showdown, expect some 9x. Uh, this is a very bad card for his range. Um, so I, I decided to go polar um, just because I think like he's just going to fold everything anyway. I could there is there is an argument for making making a block bet or something like that, but I don't like to block bet in position too much, especially when it's a break. Uh, I want to like really just go polar in this kind of situation to really kind of make them really question their range uh, if they've got some queen x or if they've got like a two pair type type combo, um, then just force into cool. Um, I think that if I was to block bet here and stuff like that in the long run, I wouldn't make as much. Um, I have ran it in my database that just going like 1.5x pot with like nutted hands. Um, it can be, can be, the, is the best way of or, or like when you have super value. So I, I kind of just stick with that. I also want to look at that jack nine hand quickly. Is it Jack Nine is here? So just see, GTO doesn't mind it at all, and actually does call, uh, does check call the river. Uh, so it's 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 it's, it's very much played with GTO. Turn, we 
just yeah, sizing's fine, no difference in EV. So everything about the hand seems totally GTO and some bluffing on the river over the thing for obvious reasons. Um, decent hand to bluff with. But yeah, just calls um, because when we look at his range of betting, um, like I said, uh, he's just going to be taking these queen of diamonds and even like, yeah, like king with the eight of diamonds. So if he's like unblocking the king of diamonds for me, which I would play like that, then he was going to take bluff. So he's even bluffing king high in this spot. And I expect people to maybe miss the king eight as much. But definitely taking these queen x so they're gonna have a decent bluff frequency um maybe they're missing too much of like the 10 2 type hand here um because not many people bluff that one so yeah maybe maybe this is is closer to a fold when we take out uh, a couple of these bluffs oh 10 2 is not a bluff sorry okay cool he's not bluffing the bottom pair not in that not in that zone oh it is bluffing 7 2 so it is bluff, bluffing some bottom pairs eight two seven two yeah so for this reason probably is more of a fold and this is a good reason to look at the solver after even if it tells you oh yeah you did fine by calling it's good to see what expect people to bluff and do they have those bluffs in their range i do expect all of these queen highs so i was going counting on those but i don't know if i'd expect eight two but some people might find it uh, but it's at full frequency and that's that's the big problem here um, the fact that it's at full frequency so, and people would miss it at some frequency. So, it might be missing enough bluffs. This is actually an interesting one because I think we've got the best hand on the flop, like a very high frequency. Turn doesn't change much. But the river, it doesn't, nothing comes in. The space doesn't come in. Uh, if you turned like 10 8, uh, 10 8 did come in, sorry. But the solver wants to check the river. I, I didn't. I went all in. Um, but when you think about it, he doesn't have much King X, he doesn't have much Ace X. And block betting or, or does make sense in this spot because this spot, because he doesn't have enough ace x or king x to defend against the jam, we just want to either check and let him bluff his missed spades. Uh, and we don't block low spades because we've got a jack of spades. And so, uh, yeah, um, the solver wanted to, to, to play it the way I played it, but check river, which was interesting. Um, here with the king queen. Uh, I just I was thinking about just jamming on him, um, but then I thought, well, I get to close off action, playing with a hand like King Queen seems good. Um, I open jam day seven suited at these stack sizes, it looks fine. Um, and here we've got a situation where he's bet half pot, and I was thinking my standard is just to call if it was a heads up pot, but then he hasn't got as much incentive to go big when someone's all in. And it just looks like I'm kind of getting trapped here. I'd never played with this player before. And so I decided just to, to, to fold and see what, what, what the opponent was betting the size of. And he was trying to like level me and it didn't work. And you see that G2 never folds the flop, but it doesn't really consider a freeway pot as much. So this is like the only big blunder. You see in this session, there's two blunders, uh, one being one that I could definitely justify. Uh, and this one I also justify. So both of them, uh, I, I, I make more money than the solver was suggesting, so of the, of the two blunders, I'm pretty happy about that. We'll, we'll get across to the next one in a, in a minute. Okay, so don't know this player, so I want to start off aggressive. I, like I said, I ISO'd him early stage. I, I want to I want to start the dynamic as as me as an aggressive player. Um, uh, yeah, don't don't want to make it like a, a easy for a, a opponent because it's quite easy to adapt from aggression to uh, passive and you can also maximize your profit if someone doesn't adapt well to aggression right but if you start off a passive and it's hard to add in aggression i feel um so i i like to start off with an aggressive dynamic and then uh, reduce i think it just kind of does better for the the mental uh, mm. meta game of the game that you're an aggressive player so uh, here i i do block uh, straight uh, but i do have a six of clubs uh, my opponent called pretty quickly on the turn um i don't think having a club in my hand especially like six of club because we do block pretty much all of his holes by the river is probably like pretty bad card to have and so i decided to not triple barrel and also like i think even like we don't block like king of king club so if he has like king high flush draw he just got there with king and so i think it's a good spot to 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 just shut off and solver agrees 
it's fine. I think you can definitely be fine with bluffing, but I think it prefers checking river, given the way that the range kind of got that gets there. Uh, and again, my opponent doesn't know much about me, and this is against regs. So if you have got a reg like and you want to start off with aggressive dynamic, just don't let them breathe for the beginning bits of the game, and you're going to be doing pretty good. Um, uh, Ace-10, I'm fine with min-raising or, or limping. Definitely want to defend my limping range, so I think it's fine there. Uh, here, just going to check down. Not There's no value to be had. Uh, checking back on the king-queen three, Eva's fine. I think at 16B blinds, I'm, I'm pretty content with checking. can call every single turn bet. If he was to go 1.5x, I can call, um, especially when it gets small like this. Uh, here with the... With the 910, and this this is a very GTO approved, which I'll, uh, I'll try to fire up. 910. So when we go in the flop, you see a hand like 910 is one of our biggest hands that we're going to be one of donking. And so I do, I was coaching a, a student the other day and I was talking about these connecting boards. And you really want to donk on these boards that are are like straight complete that you have like a decent range on and our opponent just doesn't have like what I mean straight as much because it's like I mean he's going to limp five five six off suit uh so he has got but it's just a board that's going to go check check but we hit and our range just doesn't always want it to go check check uh so hands like nine six nine five that also have equity so if our opponent did have kings or aces um that was that he raises and we get it all in we're, we're pretty much flipping and so we just stop our opponent from going check check and realize an equity and for example he would check like 8x and 7x always whereas we don't allow that to happen by betting and we build a pot with a hand that can get it all in and then some of the bluffs it might take would be those like 10x and stuff like that um and i think they're fine to take too but as long as your opponent kind of knows that you also donk these type of hands uh you I think it's a bit dangerous to just start donking boards where you haven't set up the dynamic that you also donk really strong hands. And so it's like a chicken egg thing. I think definitely start with your value and then like you can balance it out with some, some bluffs. Uh, okay, so ace isn't a big part of his range. And actually this is my raise here. My raise here is, uh, so I go all in over his bet. So when I check, he, he, he bets, I go all in. The silver wants to always raise, but not all in. As you see, he wants to go 4.64. As you see, he's got eight big blinds. So it wants to go half his stack. Why does it want to do that? It wants a hand like jack eight, never to fold. It wants a hand like seven, seven, 10, seven jack, never to fold. And I think that makes complete sense um, because we definitely like just have the best hand because it's going to be open jam and ASEX high frequency. Is he going to call the flop with some of his ASEX? Probably not. Our hands are such high equity when he just calls the flop that, and he's going to have a lot of like 8x, 7x that he might just bet the turn to try and get this to showdown. But if we made a raise and he's got a gut shot with that um, or some equity with it, then he's not going to fold to the small re-raise, but he's always going to fold to the big re-raise. And so we want to, and and we have some of the outs for some of those straight draws. And so we us having a 10 here is really good for us to... For, for the slow play a bit more. Uh, and it just seems nothing's going all in other than nine, six. So nine, six, it kind of makes sense maybe because 10 is now a bad card for us. Well, no, 10, no, 10 is obviously a good card. Um, maybe because we're blocking more over cards that he's going to have like Jack 10 and stuff like that, so, or, or like Queen, Queen 10. Um, so, it's just the 10 being so good where the six is not as good. Uh, and I think, I think that's what it is. But nonetheless, EV seems about the same, right? Uh, uh, it's a decent difference. And it makes sense why it's a decent difference because we make those folds with, uh, we make eight X or seven X fold. Okay, here with Jack eight. Now, I guess a C bet, 
we can we can actually check raise gear in because we've got the over card and an open end straight draw but i still want to realize my equity as much as possible if he was to see that and i probably wouldn't raise it raise it gear in but it would definitely be gto approved to re-raise because he hasn't got much asex in his range we've got one over and a straight draw and a backdoor flush draw so without the diamond it would never raise with the diamond i think it's fine uh, because we also block some of his continues stuff like uh, queen jack and stuff like that I think River is is close. So River's super close between um, checking and check jamming against the bet or betting for value ourselves. I decide to 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 check and then just know that if my opponent bets, I'm just going to jam him off nine x. And this is a this is the first spot that I really think is is quite good because we want to talk about what our opponent should and could call with and does he call with that and um, so I definitely like just think that he's going to have 9x a ton here, um, given the way it's played, like check blop, eight calms, why wouldn't you check 9x again? And then you put him to the test on the river. And it really just depends if you think your opponent's going to, going to fold the 9x or not. So on the river, it doesn't really check, and it does do the 1bb sizing. It's, uh, the, but with that 3.5% that it does check, it likes the all-in a lot with it. 68% of the time just goes all in and it can still call but a little bit more EV by jamming all in so as long as I think like it's either between just bet ourselves a value because we've got a good hand um, or, or jam him all in I think this is pretty good because if we look at the range that he should be betting and stuff like that um, again he's going to have 9x biggest part of his range is going to be 9x and uh, if we can make 9x fold uh, then I think it's great and also, he's not supposed to fold a hand like Jack Nine. Do we think he's going to overfold it? Likely. Um, I think people will likely overfold. Uh, definitely going to overfold hands like Nine Seven, and even hands like Ten Four, Ten Three. Like people potentially overfold these. They just don't have a blocker, and they might not even entertain it where they're supposed to be calling off every time. Uh, hands like Queen Eight. Even that. Um, yeah, Queen Eight, Queen Nine. If we can get overfolds from these, then we're going to be printing here. Um, the only thing is, you see, eight two is supposed to fold. I don't know if eight at some frequency. I don't think eight two is ever folding. Um, so that's that's not here nor there. But I don't think uh, it would ever fold. The song would ever ever fold there. Um, eight two. Not saying it's in everyone's range, but yeah. I guess eight two suited would be in everyone's range. Um, Queen 10, still limping. I want to realize as much equity. Like I said, I tried to pot control, like keep pot small. Uh, here, when our opponent uh, here, our opponent donks into us here, uh, I I folded. GTO wants a call here. Uh, it's the first donk. And this is why I actually like aggression early on even works against someone like me, right? Like I, I don't know enough about my opponent's donking range. And so I don't want to test it. I don't want to find it out this way. Yeah, but I do think calling there would definitely be fine with the Queen of Hearts. This folds about a Queen of Hearts. Um, so. It, the EV was no different, as you see, like it didn't come up as a blunder or anything. Um, so yeah, jamming the king five, super standard. Uh, don't want to be missing these jams. Uh, he ends up calling off a worse hand. Uh, a bit actually wide for queen ten. I think this is like just a bit too wide calling a queen ten here. Um, just slightly too wide uh, against like someone's jamming range because you're going to run into a lot of those king rags uh but you are going to run into suit connectors too so queen 10 is like i mean gto would be fine with it but and like against me i think him calling a queen 10 is totally good but against like population or against another rig would be different okay so here sizing um like i exploit go a bit smaller than half pot <laughs> um i don't know actually silver probably does do a, a small size i didn't want to go one bb because I still wanted to get more money out of hands that he just won't fold. And then I felt like it also would set up if like if the river was a brick, it wasn't a brick, but if the river was like a nine, I think that we 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 get hero calls quite a bit by the sizing because it does look a bit bluffy. Um so yeah, that I, I know the solver doesn't say anything about it. As you see, there's no no more blunders. Um so everything else should be fine. We can still look at hands because we want to also talk about what people do uh when he limps at these stack sizes i'm very very suspicious and i just check back the king nine and i want to get a showdown i want to see what he's doing he's got 
4.7 BBs and he's limping. Uh, there's no limps at 4.7 BBs, so I really need to see what he's up to before. And I can't believe he let. I can't believe he let me win with King High, and then like that's like, don't don't ever let someone win with King High if you limp five people lines. Uh, he had Queen High, but still you just see bit range, and I would fold because and then let's see instantly I change him from being a reg to to an unknown if he's because my yellow is more like I'm not too sure so I, I put him as a reg bit premature and I, I probably should have put him yellow um because uh, I didn't know and so both those hundred regs didn't want to didn't want the smoke anymore and they decided to quit the hundreds so we had to start hunting for games again I think I pause it but we can wait till we get a game I just say Okay, so we get a game here. We didn't miss nothing. And I'm not expecting to get 100, so I cover up the 100. Expecting to get this 20. I think this 20 does pop off. And and because I, I remembered I'm supposed to be sitting 20s. Like, why am I saying only 100s and 50s? But yeah, if I had reread the message, I would have also sat some some 10s as well which would have been cool but at least this is kind of like more like the mid stakes and uh, it kind of can conclude our live grinds because we play a big range in the last games we played the absolute micros and now we're playing mid mid stakes yeah, so there's no high stake anymore and um so yeah um this is a raise or a limp um a shallow stacks i would raise it always like 15 and under and then a bit deeper i would um i just limp it it's it's not here nor there evs the same uh you can actually I, I probably would mix it as well um i don't know who little pun is and that would be a big reason for limping it um because we would want to we've got insta insta position uh so money flows this way we're going to make ev on little punt given that he has a name like little punt probably just punting around a bit and yeah we want to i want to capitalize on that so now you see he's gone all in and like i still raise my good hands but i think limping here would even be good um but he's also going to be cautious because he's got a a recreational that i don't know if he knows or has notes on him um but we're going to we're both going to be very cautious against each other and it's going to be a bit more face up poker when we've got a uh, recreational here, because we're both trying to just capitalize the EV on the, 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 the third player, because there's so much EV in the, the unknown when he's not a reg. And so he's gone all in, seems excited to go all in free a lot. As I'm writing the note, he goes all in. So obviously it's cool because I've got question marks on him already and he does go all in with King eight. Um, had this been the first hand against the recreational, I would fold King queen. Um, and great now we've made some ev and he is still in the game so everything's great so now we definitely just want to be limping as our strategy against the the reg uh even with our better hands just to balance out a limping range um so as you see like naturally kind of leaning towards raising eve is fine i i mixed because i limped the last hand and they're both mixed i would probably raise this one as a general but just not interested he can take this this there's no ev in the hand like me playing seven eight there there's no EV and you can see I'm pointing at this guy. I'm saying, this is my guy. I'm no interest in, I'm out of position. I'm not looking to play zero EV spots out of position when I've got very plus EV spots against Little Pun. And this is kind of like where people get a bit too ego and it's like, oh, well, I want to put battle against the reg or whatever. No, 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 no. This is where you want to play against Little Pun and every point you can play against Little Pun because he is he's looking to, to get in even like 10 8 here like if i was to fold here like i wouldn't even hate it but i i know i don't but it would be like completely fine um but yeah this is the the this is the next hand that actually that that, that, that the solver says is a blunder actually but i don't believe it is and when we look at it, it it won't be a blunder when we actually analyze analyze it a bit deeper so Check call, check raise. I think both are fine, but check call majority of the time because I want to keep pots small. Again, I'm saying, look, Lil Pun's my guy here. I'm after him. I'm not really after him. If I can make a straight on the turn, if I can make a pair on the turn, things are going to change, obviously, but I'm still just trying to realize my keeper as cheap as possible. 
Frenzy Fred is also probably going to be playing a very similar strategy to that. And as you see, he doesn't barrel a card that he probably should just barrel because my range can't really defend against it. Like hands like 10 8, just have to fold. 6 8, just have to fold. Um, and then here's where the, the solver doesn't like uh, my play. It wants to just bet big with this hand. Is like this one hand that it wants to go all in. Now, I want to tell a story to Fred, Frenzy Fred. I want to say I've got a seven. I don't think me going all in or betting pot or three quarters pot tells a story that I have a seven. I think it tells a story that I've got 10, eight and I'm desperate for him to fold. So I use a size that is just like always a seven and then he can just make easy folds. And um, when we look at it, so this is not the hand. That's not the hand. This is the hand. So when you see the flop, yeah, call cool, 71%, raise 27, EV is the same, makes no different turn. I did actually think about hit, uh, betting the turn because we have like suited 7-4, we have suited 4-2 uh, suited. We've got like all the two pair combos that he just doesn't have. And I actually did consider leading the turn. Uh, I think that's okay. And the river, it, it, it's, it's saying it's a minus 70. And why is it a minus 70? Because when we look at his range, he's supposed to call pretty much always a king jack, sometimes bluff. He's supposed to bluff with jack 10. So at high frequency, it's going to be missing that. Uh, he's supposed to have 9-7 in his range. He's not going to have 9-7 in his range. He's going to bet the turn with 9-7. Uh, so going to be missing that part of his range. And I think people are going to be over betting turn with all the seven X's because I don't think he expects me to flat too many uh, nine X and he's going to protect his equity. So he's not going to have a lot of these hands that actually have big hands. I don't think pocket sevens are going to check the turn. Uh, I think they're just going to continue barreling through because again, he's going to be scared that I've got hands like 10, eight in my range. Um, so when we take into consideration, he doesn't have these hands and he's going to overfold King Jack, Jack 10, Queen 10, uh, King Jack. And possibly, possibly, I, I don't expect him to fold an ace, but possibly fold an ace. Uh, I'm trying to think, what did he fold? Like, because pretty much all of his range shouldn't fold, and he just stat folded. And so when you think, like, yeah, these are these these hands that were just not going to be in his range, and head eight's always supposed to bluff, jack eight's always supposed to bluff, queen eight's always supposed to bluff, they're just going to be snap folds. So, so it makes actually my life very easy um, for a block bet is to be the most optimal. And um, I like this. So I don't I don't actually consider this a blunder. I think it's actually a very well played hand, uh, especially when we want to keep our chips for as much EV we can make against um, Little Pump. But yeah, he, he folds. So that's nice. And sometimes we have to like step away from the solver a bit and think, like, what's our opponent really going to think? Because it would be a great spot to exploit, maybe jam all in when you have a four, right? Because our opponent's going to be like, oh, he's got 10, eight, he's got six, eight. He's going to like, oh, and just like maybe make a hero called king, queen, right? But against the block bet, maybe he's like, oh, he's always got a seven, you know? So we, you still want to not be like too married to the solvers, especially at the lower stakes where you can actually think what my opponent would think when I bet this size. And I think it kind of does lay down. Um, but that's also why he should be bluffing so much because um, maybe I have got 7x there um, and he wants to put me in complete uh, like torture, right? Um, especially when it wants to check back pocket sevens on the turn and, and um, actually has some decent hands checking back the turn. He gets a little pun and now we play him heads up. Always going all in here. Nothing to do other than going all in. And we've got our second game, and it's now going to be a, a 20 dollar game. And I think I'm just going to exit quickly the 100 and the other 50. And then now we're with it. Okay, so ace eight going to be one of our better here recording hands um, when we check back. Uh, not interfering with clubs, not interfering with 10x, not interfering with jack x. Uh, so checking it back is is pretty standard. Uh, River, 8x, a big part of our range. Um, yeah, just still. And I'm going to be bluffing here with a hand like 3-4, uh, like 4-5 four, four, suited, stuff like that. I'm not going to bet hands that don't have equity on the flop or turn there uh, because our opponent's going to, I would unblock all of his folds, having twos and threes and fours and fives in my range. Because um, those are the hands we would be targeting for folds, and he would end up having just more like hands that can continue. 
Um, here, everything's totally standard. Nothing to really talk about. Uh, might have missed, don't think I missed anything. Here at these stack sizes, I don't expect them to, to really ever like check back Queen X, uh, especially on this like wet board. And now we have another situation. Uh, we have another situation where we've got uh, 9x being a big part of his range. And do we want to do 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 we want to check call? Not really. And just got a perfect combo for a check jam. Um, I think he should always be bet calling off. Problem. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Then everything completes. And I'm going to have straights and flushes play the exact same. So I think I think he played it good to check back there actually. Um, but he would have got my stack had he had he bet. But yeah, he might be in a tough spot and then forced to fold. So yeah, I think his check back is actually very good. Here, I make a big exploit. Uh, actually, I don't think it's even that big of an exploit. I, I definitely want to call flop because if a diamond comes, but I'm already very, 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 very skeptical of an unknown player betting this big on the flop in their $20 game. And when he goes this size on the turn, I am out of here. Everything's just kind of got there. I didn't actually see this hand come up. Oh, it did and must be gto approved because we got okay it doesn't that's so a yeah here fold 77 percent and so actually i thought it was exploit it's not an exploit um so yeah we we played it good there and yeah just making sure we're not getting married just because we've got top pair we don't have to cool down you see the solver folds because look um his range has got all the two pairs all the straights got all the sets uh, we do not, we don't need to defend our range that much. And so like, we literally just don't even need to defend even top pair. We want to be defending hands like, well, King Jack wouldn't want to defold. King nine wouldn't want to fold. Uh, hands that have some of this size beat because he might bet the size with like King eight. Um, whereas he's not going to bet it with King three, for example. Um, four, six, this is the most interesting hand of the, the whole video. Four, six, we can probe here. We can probe here, I think that's fine. Um, and I think I should have probably probed, but I also quite like exploiting people's delay because I don't think he's got many straight draws. We do block some straight. So if you check back a straight draw, we block. And now we were just putting pressure on AX uh, that wants to bet turn, maybe some 10-4 type hand, and maybe some like 9-7 type hand that did check the, the flop. We don't interfere with that. Uh, so originally I was thinking we just have a bottom end um, Bottom in gutter, now I realize I have double gutter, and then we decide to, to raise it. Uh, definitely going to be one of our best bluff combos because when the top end fills in, we fully represent it very, very, very strong. Like all of our bluffs filled in here, other than four six. And someone would really have to dig deep to think somebody's raising the term. Oh, yeah, also spades, but spades probably would shut off always on a, on a queen here. Um, so Pretty much most of my bluffs, I, don't, I just don't have that many bluffs left and we get the fold. And it is again, GTO approved. It's hardly ever checking, but mainly just probing the turn, which obviously EV seems exactly pretty much the same. Um, but if we do check, it's either folding, which I would have done, but once I realized that double gut, oh, I went for the raise and it likes it a lot. And the all in is yeah also approved. Uh, you can block bet and you can go all in and or you could check. So all seem fine but it's nice to have these kind of things in your arsenal because other regs don't have them in their arsenal so again against a fish i wouldn't be trying to pull this move uh or a recreational should i call them i don't like calling people fish sorry um but uh i wouldn't really play this line against the recreational but against a reg we really want to put them to the test uh, make their life hard right we just even if he calls me there i've got a good dynamic you know that's a good dynamic for going ahead uh, against him um and we been win a big court when he does fold here two overs in the gut shot so shallow i can't bet call a raise um so if i can't bet call a wave wave raise when i've got equity i don't want to bet um that's kind of my rule there on the turn we don't represent much i think we're going to get a lot of check raises uh, off good regs anyway if we bet turn so you see i, I consider betting but then i think actually my life's better my life's better checking and realizing my equity and i can bluff loads of cards obviously i complete with a six a seven a five a, I, all those hands all those cards are good for my range and i can bluff um like 
pretty much any other card because I've got all the other cards in my range too. So like it ends up being a very good spot to like check, check, bet. Um, and I wouldn't go polo on the river. I'd probably go like 1.5 to represent if like a, like a 10 or something came or, or, or a king or something. I'd go like 1.5 to represent that I've got that, that river card and I'm trying to get value. I, I consider free betting 9.6 and then I opt against it uh, again because I just don't know anything about him. I don't need to, don't need to go there yet. King nine, run into kings. Um, I think the open jam is fine. Limp calling jam is fine. Uh, probably more th towards the limp, but just, again, keeping that aggressive aggression up it works pretty good. So this is actually a very, very interesting spot too. So we've called the flop, as you see, and then the turn comes, turn comes a card. This is a raised pot. So I think people, one, people are going to over C bet this board because he doesn't have as many flushes as I have. And so he should definitely have a check in range, even if it's an A side board. And when I ran people C betting this 100%, which I think most people will, um, it actually check raises some bottom pairs um, because uh, our hand just does better um, because it just folds out all of his like, even stuff like uh, king king a etc that just doesn't have a spade now on the turn when the spade comes i like to take the bottom of my my calling range flop and turn it into a donk uh, i've got the king of spades i've got the queen of spades in my range and it just doesn't really this is quite easy for him just to like overfold against and um or just not have anything to defend it because he, he over c bet the flop because we're assuming he's c bet in 100 so he's going to have hands that just don't connect at all and he's just going to have hands that just don't have a spade in it uh, high frequency um so um we do have spades we don't have air and that's the thing here we just don't have any air our, our range improves and so taking like this nine and turn it into a bluff it like i feel like it's pretty good okay it's gto approved also but it doesn't, oh, it doesn't really take it, but the EV is fine, uh, like 1.2%. And as you see, mm -hmm. yeah, like what kind of hands? It's just the bottom of the range. Mm -hmm. There's 10 eights, even without a spade. Um, hands that just like the bottom of our range and then mix in with some, obviously, some flushes, like queen 10 with a spade and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's this is what I like to take, especially when I know my population are going to be like over c in this board anyway and uh, i can do a lot of maneuverability on those boards so i think that's all of the most interesting spots anyway so all right guys peace and good luck uh love to see the faces that come weekly uh, nice one have a good one bye bye